Geneva Agreement turns 57. Norton says no to Hicken. And it's Burnham's 100th birthday. I'm Enrico Balfort, and this is Uncut News. Do you see news happening? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-6151. The Foreign Affairs Ministry of Guyana released a statement on the 57th anniversary of the signing of the Geneva Agreement over the weekend, highlighting its significance as a binding international agreement between the United Kingdom, Venezuela, and British Guiana, which removed the obstacle to Guyana's independence. The statement emphasized that the Geneva Agreement imposes no obligation on Guyana to refrain from economic development activities in any portion of its territory or appurtenant maritime areas, and any attempt by Venezuela to restrict Guyana's sovereignty and sovereign rights would be inconsistent with the Geneva Agreement and the rule of international law. Ghana thus urged Venezuela to comply with the terms of the agreement, which includes final and binding settlement of the controversy through the International Court of Justice, which is currently hearing the case. The Guyana Fire Service and the Guyana Police Force were called in this morning following a bomb scare at the St. Rose's High School in Georgetown. The school and teachers were evacuated and the facility was scanned for any explosive devices. However, as of news time, there were no explosives found in the building, nor was there any idea as to who called in the threat. The Chinese embassy has stated that it does not consider the recent 4.1 billion Ghana dollar money laundering investigation involving two Chinese companies as complete, and cautions against any presumption of guilt while also stating its readiness to assist local law enforcement officials if requested. The embassy spokesperson said that presumption of guilt at this time is not appropriate or fair, and that the police investigation in Ghana has not yet been completed. One person is in police custody for allegedly assaulting male students at Woodley Park Secondary School in Babise. These students were reportedly attacked by several men in the village who were captured on a viral video armed with pieces of wood. A parent of a student attending the school posted the video on Facebook, alleging that the attackers targeted African children and claimed that black men should not be in the area, that it was only for Indians. The police have launched an investigation, engaged their teacher and students of the school, and plan to conduct further investigations. The Education Minister and the Home Affairs Ministry have condemned the racially motivated attack and promised to keep students safe. Aubrey Norton said on Sunday that he would not support the appointment of Clifton Hicken as police commissioner. Under Guyana's constitution, the president must consult with the opposition leader for their candidate for the post of police commissioner. If the opposition leader withholds support, the president would either appoint or retain their preferred choice as acting police commissioner. Norton's announcement is believed to be the first time he has made his position known publicly. Higgin was appointed acting police commissioner in March of last year, and there have been indications that his tenure would be extended beyond the retirement age of 55 or on July the 22nd, 2023. The Guyana Geology and Mines Commission's office will be relocated to the old JBC building on High and Princess Street in Workinrush, Georgetown. After years of delay, according to the Minister of Natural Resources, Vikram Barrett, the GGMC has already started retrofitting the building, but the cost of the work has not been disclosed. Barrett cited the agency's outgrowing its previous office space as the reason for the move. There was no announcement of the remedial work even being done. It's February, so how about you do something special for your first love? Your truck. Powered Automotive stocks a huge range of parts from the best brands in the business. Show your truck some love today. Visit them at lot 491 EE Eccles. Or call or WhatsApp them on telephone number 697-0171. Save big on truck parts at Powered Automotive, the number one heavy-duty truck parts store in Guyana. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's Car of the Week. Currently on sale is 2017 RDQ3. It's the new model, and it comes with Bluetooth, mark rims, new tires, TV, CD, stereo, fog lamps, spot camera, and much, much more. Buy cars for $6 million. Our pay is low as $1.2 million, with around $116,000 monthly for five years, and it is yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Or visit the showrooms at Lot 171, Pitoroshi, Queensau, or Lot 2, Hamashi, and Southern Lakers sent you for this sweet deal. Tired of waiting on hold, tracking down a delivery driver, or carrying cash for your food orders? GT Eat is here to make your life easier. Ghana's first cashless food ordering and delivery app. Choose from Georgetown's top restaurants, pay securely with your card, and get your food delivered right to your doorstep. With the convenience of being able to order from your phone and the added feature of tracking your order, GT Eats is the ultimate solution for all your food needs. Download the app on Apple and Android stores and start ordering the easy way today. 
Two security guards working for Guy America's security service were apprehended by the police after one of them was captured on a video reenacting a Skang concert. Although their identities have not been disclosed by the police, they have confirmed that one of the men received the firearm from the other and fired it in the air, as it was shown in the video. Initially, the police announced that the two men were wanted, but they were later arrested. The police are currently conducting investigations. Now for today's oil update. CGX Energy, together with its joint venture partner Frontera Energy Corporation, outlined their plan for activities in the quarantine block at the recently concluded energy conference. CGX Energy has been operating in the Guyana Basin for more than 25 years and has drilled four offshore wells and three onshore wells, having spent over 700 million US dollars in the process. The company is in the process of drilling its fifth offshore well, the Way One well, on the quarantine block. CGX Energy also disclosed that it is cleaned up its major debt through a farm-down transaction with Frontera. Because CGX has yet to produce any oil from its limited discoveries so far, they had to sell much of its stake to Frontera. In other oil-related news, Guyana's US $2 billion gas to energy project may not generate enough power to meet the nation's energy demands by 2026, according to the project head, Winston Brasington. The 300 megawatt gas fired power plant project is expected to come online in 2024 and will be financed by a loan. Brasington said that the project is projected to generate half of the nation's electricity and claimed that electricity bills will be reduced by 50%. However, the nation is expected to be saddled with an annual debt of US $106 million for 20 years to pay for the project's development costs. Also, the finance minister revealed that more than 5 billion US dollars will be withdrawn from the nation's natural resources fund over the next three years to finance developmental projects across the nation. The NRF is projected to have a balance of around 10.7 billion US dollars by 2026, according to Singh. However, based on current oil prices and the 2021 NRF Act, only about 5.4 billion US dollars will remain in the fund by 2026. The minister emphasized the need to invest in critical initiatives for long term economic growth, mainly in infrastructure. And finally, Today marked the 100th birth anniversary of our nation's first executive president, Lyndon Forbes Sampson Burnham. Born on February 20th, 1923 in Kitty Georgetown, Burnham was educated at the prestigious Queen's College and earned his law degree in England several years later. Nonetheless, he had political aspirations from a young age, and by 25 years old, he was the mayor of Georgetown. Along with Dr. Jenny Jagan and others, Burnham went on to become one of the principal architects of this nation. From the nation's independence in 1966 to his death in 1985, Burnham led Guyana under a political philosophy of national self-reliance, expanded public services, and nationalization of key industries of the post-colonial Guyana. However, for as many persons as his presidency helped, it is argued just as many, if not more, were harmed. His two-decade reign was marred with controversy, with solid accusations of he and his party, the People's National Congress, utilizing racial discrimination, political intimidation, voter fraud, state-sanctioned violence, and even black magic to solidify their dictatorial grasp of power of the nation. While an objective analysis of his reign may be almost impossible to find in Ghana, it is undeniable that LFS Burnham has left an indelible mark on our nation's history all this 100 years later. Robbery season might be over, but the streets are still mean. That's why you need to get security for your home and business with Sheriff Security. Sheriff Security has well-trained guards, armed and unarmed patrol, marine patrol, canine services. They speed leaving our drones. Why? Because your security is their highest priority. You've seen the rest. Now hire the best. Hire Sheriff Security Service today. You can multiply your cash by selling digital top-up. This is a legit way you can earn some extra money at your business or to supplement your current hustle. Become a top offender quick and easy by linking with Cellular Plus. Call them on telephone number 685-3109 for more info. Now for our uncut news, Fuel's poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Ghana, the region, the diaspora, and how you fear it at least was. On Friday, I ask, what is one of the main impediments from national unity occurring in Ghana? But before we get to that, I'm proud to announce our latest addition to the noble army, Richard Singh who is supporting us at the reporter level, the highest level of monthly support we've received so far. I appreciate it. And a special thank you to David Griffith, Dion Nascimento, Project Zero, and Dimitri V. I appreciate you all. Honestly, I really do, because this is why I do it. And if you're watching at home and you'd like to support our movement, just hit the link in the video description.
Ian King said, For Guyana to achieve national unity, you need to have and show respect for each other. Politicians must stop using the people for their own political gains. Look for the best in all our Guyanese brothers and sisters. I agree. Indeed. Now for tonight's question. I want to know, seeing as today is Burnham's 100th birthday, and he was definitely a strong proponent of history and culture and all the like, I'd like to know, how do you feel about this government when it comes to preserving our nation's culture and history? Do you think they're doing a good job, or could they do better? And if so, how? I want you to think about that question. Tell us in the comments below. If your sponsor is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight, and check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Nuka Bullfoot saying goodnight, folks.